What is up YouTube, Kronos here and welcome back to another PSO2 guide video. So before we get this video started, I actually wanted to make a quick little apology. Those of you guys who checked out the video this morning knows it's a, it was, granted this is what this video is going to be, but it was a jet boots only bouncer skill tree. In that video I did make a couple of mistakes that I actually, now granted they weren't a huge, huge deal, it was a couple of things that I misspoke about, but anyone who knows me knows that I have this really big issue with misinformation. So. I know a lot of you guys are coming to the channel because you've looked for any individual specific guides or videos or anything along those lines. And the last thing I want to do is have you look for a jet boot specific tree. And then granted the tree is fine. The information applied with the tree does come out to be a bit incorrect. Then you take that information, that information spreads and I don't want to be responsible for that sort of thing spreading, especially if it's wrong. So I went back to the drawing board, did a bit more research, found out that yes, I was incorrect about a few things made those adjustments and changes, and now I'm ready to present to you guys something a bit different. Um, spoiler, I actually recorded this video earlier and I still missed something. So this is actually my second time recording this tonight alone, um, just because I wanted to make sure I was 100% correct. And we're gonna go over what I missed and how you probably also made this, or how you might've also made this mistake as well. Um, so today we're gonna go over a bouncer skill tree. This is going to be for jet boots only for those of you guys who are looking for either dual blades only or i'm sorry soaring blades is what they call them the north american servers but soaring blades only or soaring blades and jet boots i already made a video about that that is the last video that um i created about bouncer skill trees i'll make sure to link the i'll link that video in the video description itself or you can just check out the channel and you'll find it in case i forget because i tend to um but anyway this is gonna be for jet boots only. This is on request. Now granted, I will warn, I am not the best jet boots player. I have not played jet boots. To be honest, my tenure in bouncer over multiple years has been mostly in soaring blades. Jet boots were something that I kind of shied away for for a very, very long time. I wanted to play soaring blades only because I have this hard on for wanting to play dual blades. Um, and I like dual wielding, it's just kind of my thing. I always has been, always will be. That's just really, really, really what I wanted to do. And I really pushed that into my gameplay and just let you know, you can do it, it is doable. You will clear a lot of content. However, you are gimping yourself. So in reality, you should be playing both weapons. However, it's a game. Games are meant to be had fun with. So if you have fun playing just one weapon, then by all means play that one weapon. My goal here is to show you how to, or at least attempt to show you the most optimal way to build that tree for that one weapon you're going to play. So I'm not going to go too much into all the specifics of the bouncer tree. I've done this multiple, multiple times, but I'm going to just talk to you really quick about what we're looking at here and move forward from there. And just a quick little to, or a quick little note, I will be going into kind of the future of the channel after the video is done, but what we're going to be working on that kind of ties into this stuff. So if you're you know interested in that, pay attention, hang until the end, but I want to try to jump to this relatively quickly because it's already been three minutes and we really haven't even talked about the video yet. So let's jump into this. So Jet Boots Bouncer, pretty simple on the tree. You're basically grabbing everything we grabbed in the multi-tree with a couple exceptions and there's not touching the dual blades only portions. So what I did here is I've created a bare bones tree. This will be in the video description. This is bare bones of what you should absolutely get a hold of. And the rest of the stuff is gonna depend on a couple of things that we're gonna go over in this video. So Jet Boots Focus is a no brainer. Jet Boots Focus allows you to, um, to boost up your focus gauge, your focus gauge, then it gets expended on certain things. Um, most commonly it's going to be your jet sweep kick, which does tons and tons and tons of damage. Super awesome. Definitely, definitely worth grabbing. So jet boost focus and focus boost, um, and then your jet boots escape. So jet boots escape is kind of interesting. It makes you invulnerable for a period of time when you perform a normal attack or a photon art while jet boots are equipped. Basically you have guard frames on the first part of a photon art or a normal attack. Um, I say guard frames because actually you see a barrier in front of you. I'm not sure how different that is. Uh, yeah, I'm super, super uh, prepared for this video, by the way. I didn't totally have Steam open and show like a friends list pop up, but no biggie. Um, but uh, guard frames um, show like a little bit of a barrier in front of you. So you're not like invulnerable, but you do have those guard frames in front of you. It might just be all around you, honestly, so it might not make a difference. You might be fully invulnerable, but that's how I like to call it if I see it. Um, Encore Jump just allows you to jump an extra time, costing you one focus. Um, you can do this against something that is... Uh, that will deal damage when you're making that jump and you can continue you can continuously jump over and over again generating focus and then you know spending it with that jump itself so it allows you to do some pretty cool things in tower defense that's really about it i grab it because it's a point and i can do some cool stuff with it so not a really huge deal soaring blades focus we skip over 
Um, so here's the first time we're going to deviate from our other tree itself. We grabbed field domain and critical field. That was pretty standard. A lot of classes like crit and does some pretty cool stuff in case you don't know what crit does in this game, but a critical hit in this game, you have a damage range. The damage range say, say being from seven to 10 critical hit makes you just automatically deal that 10 damage itself. So it is a DPS increase, but it is not a maximum DPS increase. Like it will, like it is in other games. Um, but critical field will just apply that 30% crit, not only to yourself, but other people. Field remain will just allow that 30 seconds of downtime that you have on the buff not being up because it's up for 90 seconds. I'm sorry, it's got a cooldown of 90 seconds, it's up for 60 seconds. The field remain just covers the other 30 seconds on you. And it also allows you to uh, like run through people and apply your buff to them if they're not inside of your little ring. They still have the buff for 30 seconds. You only have to be inside your little ring once every 30 seconds roughly to be able to maintain their buff. Um, Elemental PP Restorate Field. On Jet Boots, I found this to be most useful only because one, you're always on the proper element for Jet Boots because you just cast a tech, a charge tech will change your element of your Jet Boots, and we're going to go into that in just a moment because that feeds into why I'm re-recording this video. But um, a charged tech does change the element of your Jet Boots. Now this depends. So I did do a bit of testing on this because I was curious. A charged tech that applies to something of attack is going to change this. So when I mean like something that involves an attack, things like anti things like resta i'm sorry things like anti and things like um actually i did yeah that was right it was anti and resta so those two types of texts things like shift and d band because they actually don't apply to a sort of attack they actually don't change your element so your element remains the same say for example you cast if um you cast a foe and then you cast a full charge resta behind it you're not going to go back to light because you cast that resta even though it's a light tech however if you cast a full charge foe and then you charge a Megiverse, which is a dark type tech, casts a field around you and that is affected by you attacking. Granted, it gives you a heal from attacking, but it's affected by you attacking. That does actually change your element. That happens with Megiverse. That happens with Xanverse. Um, that happens with any attack techs that deal damage flat out and those specific field techs. But is not applied to Shifta, is not applied to D-Band, is not applied to Resta or anti tested with all those that seem to work fine. But anyway, elemental PP restorate field just allows you to generate some more PP off of making sure you're exploiting the enemy's weakness. Normal attacks on um, jet boots do a ton of damage. They're like the second highest normal attack damage in the game, if I remember correctly. And just your normal attacks can almost rival, not exactly, you know, do as much or pass your, um, your, your photon art, like actual rotation but they can rival the amount of damage you're dealing with your photon arts into your jet sweep kicks so it is very 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 useful it happens you happen to use it quite a bit with the normal attacks to keep your pp up so elemental pp restore field does help out plus you also dump a ton of pp as you're playing jet boots so being able to get it back fairly easy is going to be really nice um shift to air attack boost and d-band pp restore is pretty self-explanatory you always have these up all the time um, shift and D-band and you really want D-band up to be able to maintain your PP as normal. Um, those of you who laugh when I say maintain your PP, uh, don't worry, I'm laughing too on the inside. Anyway, moving on. I've seen this come up a couple of times, rapid boost and people not taking it. I don't understand why you wouldn't. Rapid boost not only increases your attack speed um, for your charge attacks, your charge techs, it also stacks on top of the ring that increases your charge speed for charging after a PA, so when you use a PA itself, so a photon art, and then you charge a tech, that is increased by that ring. Rapid boost also further increases that. And then there's also a class later on that increases that even more. So all of these stacks, definitely useful. The faster you attack, the more damage you deal. So this here, switch strike. Just so clarification, because people are, there are some people who don't understand how switch strike actually works. Jet boots have two stats on them they have actually two damage type stats on them they have tech power and they have striking power this ability is just for that so it starts with tech power you activate switch strike it makes a striking power that's all it does it just switches what it actually uses so you have this if you're playing a striking based jet boots player if you're playing jet boots and um soaring blades this is a must because soaring blades are going to scale off of melee power not tech power so take this if we're playing that um and that's also going to kind of feed into what we're doing here just a quick note kind of a deviation off of this we're going to be back to this in just a moment um stances you use both reason being is elemental stance is great 
definitely useful definitely does a lot of damage but if you have a breakable part break stance is more damage even with the proper element so you're still going to get that elemental weakness bonus but you're also getting break stance multiplier on top of it as well unless there's some sort of weird interaction between elemental weakness alongside of elemental stance that isn't applied in the actual tree that's showing i'm pretty sure there's not i'm almost positive break stance always ends up winning out in the end in that situation especially on magatsu you take break stance if for some reason that we found that that's incorrect i'm going to leave this one as is but if for some reason we found that that is incorrect then just drop break stance you have points to work with we can talk about where you'll put those points to if you have extras um you never take break stance d it only applies to jet or to soaring blades ignore that um outside of that we're going to toss these into critical just because we have so much access to critical and it will be useful in the future anyway um and i like seeing blue numbers so that's a personal preference of my own you can hold off of this and put it into melee power or something along those lines you're eventually going to come down to critical at some point so switch strike we're back here so switch strike is going to be our answer to what type of jet boots bouncer we're going to play there is two types or two archetypes and one that i'm going to recommend over the other there's either the melee power soaring or the melee power jet boots bouncer or there's going to be the tech power jet boots bouncer now because of the current state of the game i'm going to recommend the melee power soaring or the mailing power jet boots bouncer reason for it is two major things one your choice of subclass is going to be hunter and two the other choice of subclass <laughs> um which we'll go off and we'll go on into why that's a problem in just a moment so let's just let's jump over to the hunter tree really quick here hunter silver pretty self-explanatory we're just going to grab everything in the uh in the stance tree here um you have the option of dropping critical fury if you didn't grab crit here as well in that case just toss in something like melee power you have two defensive options with going with hunter and we'll talk about these fairly quick because i go into them in all of my videos when i talk about hunter but you have the option of automate half iron will stalwart spirit automate half essentially just uses a mate item when you drop below 50 percent now just so you're aware if you are at 50 i'm sorry if you're at 60 percent hp you take something that you take damage that hits you for 70 percent of your maximum hp you die unless you drop below 50 percent and the act of you dropping below 50 percent does not kill you automate half will not save you so if you're at say 60 percent you drop to 30 percent automate half prox heals you up now keep in mind it also uses your weakest of your mate items so you generally do not want to carry monomates on you sometimes in cases where things are going to be super dire you can avoid carrying die mates on you as well you just keep a trimate because of course a monomate heals you for 25 percent of your hp a die mate heals you for 50 percent and a trimate heals you for 100 percent so keep that in mind um the other option is, of course is iron will stalwart spirit iron will stalwart spirit is a 75 percent chance of surviving a one hit or something that would normally kill you basically so a fatal hit will leave you at one hp stalwart spirit makes you invulnerable for 15 seconds and also gives you 300 melee power pretty solid not gonna lie um definitely useful but you can see when you think about these two skills why having the both of them seems a little bit counterproductive one is going to be you know life insurance essentially it's going to be insurance if you uh if you're gonna die and the other one is going to be something that keeps you above if you drop below 50 percent hp ideally these kind of co or these uh, kind of don't exist together all the time it depends on the class you're playing fighter for example is going to use something like this but i don't really personally recommend this um i actually normally go with something like this if i'm going to go automate half recently i've been doing a lot of ultimates so i've actually gone iron will stalwart spirit without automate half just because a lot of the uh the situations i end up in i can heal myself up from just you know quick tapping uh, mediverse it's very common that with bouncer you just instead of charging mediverse you just quick tap and then attack really quick out of it um usually that's enough to heal you right back up immediately so it's pretty quick it's really useful and i'm used to it personally also in ultimates there's a lot of attacks that usually are going to almost one shot you anyway so having iron will stalwart spirit usually saves me in those situations and sometimes i can make a gamble that it would normally make and it would pay off with extra damage either way good choices if you choose to go with both that's up to you you have the points too if you want to be a bit more defensive if you have extra points left over and you want to go with um i'm sorry if you don't have the extra points and you're going somewhere else with your tree one point iron will is still a 30 percent chance to survive that hit so not too bad um outside of that you would just drop the points into melee power quick note you can go into hunter physique hunter physique is kind of nice because it gives you essentially 45 seconds of not being knocked back to my knowledge you still can be stunned so be careful of that but you won't be knocked back whatsoever and you can stack that along with rapid boost to just churn out damage without being slowed down so it's pretty cool um but that's totally up to you on how you go about it note that if you're going to go to hunter physique some people just go for one point in it just to get the 30 seconds it gives you a bit of a damage reduction and you, you do get the the knockback resistance um but in those cases you know 
you still have to put three points in a flash guard just to get one point in hunter physique also bouncer suffers from a problem where you have way too many buttons on your sub palette you end up needing to have multiple sub palettes it can be kind of a pain um so i Wow, right in the middle of that, had something in my throat there. Sorry about that, guys. But I personally don't want to add any more to my palette, so I just avoid going into Hunter Physique. Now, outside of that, you're probably thinking, you know, what do I do with my skills? What am I going to toss these? If you have extra leftover skills, some uh, honorable mentions, of course, are Melee Power. Um, there's an option for Sidestep. One thing to keep in mind is I've personally tested this. I've only ever needed three points in Sidestep. That's been more than enough for me to be able to actively dodge through most of what you're dealing with um i know some people have mentioned being able to stack the two of these i personally haven't seen where this has worked out the idea is that you take two points in here that gives you 0.9 and then three points in here that gives you 0.11 which would add up to the maximum 0.20 i don't believe it works that way to my knowledge it only takes the highest one but if people have found out uh, evidence of otherwise by all means go for it but in my experiences it doesn't so just keep that in mind. Take it with a grain of salt. You might experience something different. Definitely is a decent option for you. And again, outside of that, really, your options are melee power. Um, I've heard of people going into guard stance, just so you're aware. Guard stance advance does not work on subclass. It's only main class. And really, all you're giving yourself is uh, defenses, which isn't a terrible idea when it comes to a subclass. But you don't want to overkill. You don't want to go overkill. Um, you do still want to deal damage. Killing the enemy is always the fastest form of damage reduction. They cannot hurt you if they're dead. Um, but you also want to make sure you just have enough to survive to kill them. So if you're not playing the option of a melee based or a um, melee power jet boots bouncer, you have the option of a tech one. Now a tech jet boots bouncer, the only change it really would make is drop switch strike. There's an argument for a bit of elemental burst, maybe a point, maybe more. Um, but essentially what this does is whenever you expend or you, uh, you cancel your elements that's focused it's stored in your focus gauge it uh it explodes you you get a blast now i do believe this does work with jet sweep kick but i haven't personally tested this i believe it causes it to explode in those situations but things that cancel your element on jet boots are going to be specifically whenever you press your weapon action twice or whenever you swap weapons now granted swapping weapons doesn't cause you to lose your focus but it does cause you to lose the element that is set for that focus meaning if you cast foe you get you, gen you generate some focus and then you switch elements over to something else or you switch uh, weapons over to like say soaring blades and then you switch back to jet boots you will still have that focus but it'll be back to your original element that's something to keep in mind something that i wanted to test out personally and found that to be the case to my knowledge elemental burst just means whenever you are either canceling that element maybe with a neutral um double what's the word i'm looking for weapon action button press or you jet sweep kick it explodes it causes an explosion to uh for your elemental stored in your focus gauge now if it doesn't work with jet sweep kick and i'm not 100 percent sure about it but if it doesn't work with jet sweep kick don't even bother picking it up um there is something that you'll use later on another weapon later on that you'll use that will be useful for this maybe there's some net merit to it personally i'm not 100 percent to be honest i don't really think it's going to be worth it um i feel like if you're going to play this way you would pick up elemental burst you would use the burst for the subclass you're going into fighter um now i know some of you guys have probably known me to meme on choosing fighter as a subclass basically saying that you're basically looking to die and i haven't changed my opinion on that you are basically looking to die if you're picking up the subclass playing bouncer as your main unless you're really really good at being hyper offensive and you understand every single opening that you have and you need you're gonna die um that's just the fact of the matter is you don't have any defenses you the only defense you have is your offense on bouncer and it's your guard frames on activating things and then your crazy um <laughs> your crazy invulnerability frames whenever you're using certain of certain weapon actions now granted yes you do have quite a bit of them you you are you can be hyper offensive and still get away with a lot of things but you're gonna get clipped you're gonna get caught and you, you mean you're, you're gonna die that's just kind of all there is to it but if you're that good then hey more power to you if you want to play this way. I still think personally you're going to deal more damage playing a bouncer with um, Hunter as a sub um, just because of the avenues and its possibilities you're going to have available to you to attack in situations where a fighter may need to evade. Um, Hunter sub is going to allow you to take a hit, take a couple hits and deal some extra damage while fighter is going to have to get out of there because they're going to die if they take that hit.
So what you're doing basically is you're playing to Valiant Stance. Valiant Stance, of course, is just your stance-based damage bonus. It's being in front of the target to deal damage. Um, Tech Arts Perfect Attack Bonus and Combo Variants. I think it's called combo it's combo var i'm assuming it's variance but combo variance um attack or pp attack save essentially just means that whenever you combo either photon arts or text together so you use like a photon art and photon art or a photon art and attack or attack and attack basically as long as it's not the exact same one twice you're able to generate more damage and use less pp now if you're playing a jet boots bouncer and you're using these elemental explosions assuming that this is also expending the element that's stored in your weapon itself you may need to cast a tech charged again anyway um so part of your rotation may end up being using a photon art using a tech so on and so forth um so this is fairly useful in that situation itself now it's perfectly honest again i still don't think this is a great option for most people i wouldn't recommend this for a new player whatsoever um if you were going to do something like this a very underrated subclass is summoner summoner has access to pretty much unconditional damage base bonuses across the board for most any type of class it gives you the option to be able to use text which bouncer already has so it kind of loses a little bit of flair that way but what it also does is give you defensive options you have things like total defense you have things like mega hp up um, and things of that sort you also have dexterity up which arguably is a bit of a damage increase as well just so you're aware of how dexterity itself works dexterity allows you to i'm sorry dexterity basically affects your damage range i mentioned beforehand so basically if your damage range is between seven and ten it takes that seven and rises it from uh, seven to like say eight as an example so something to keep in mind um summoner i would say if you really want to play a tech based bouncer you really want to kind of mess around with explosions and that sort of thing you're gonna want to go summoner fighter's not a bad choice again you've got things like half line boost which increases chance of affecting status ailments you have chaser blind you've got things like chaser damage and chaser or uh, sorry extra chaser damage and then things like photon slayer to help out with extra damage when your pp falls lower so on and so forth so these are all things that are great also by the way adrenaline does work i know people someone was asking if adrenaline even is a possibility of working it definitely does work it is not main class only things like critical strike though are unfortunately if it wasn't that'd be kind of dope but it is so i mentioned that this is kind of not the greatest now but that that is that implies that in the future it'd be better Part of the reason is because, of course, fighter being a sub is your optimal choice. Technically speaking, summoner is not a, decent, is not a bad option, but it is weaker. And the second reason behind that is because techs right now are not the best. We don't have crafting in the game. We will be getting crafting, don't get me wrong. That's coming in episode four. So in August, we'll have crafting in the game. You'll be able to tailor your techs and your, sp your spells to your liking or to more better to your use to make things relatively stronger. So in that situation, things might be a bit better. So that's where things are going to differ from the JP servers because they already had crafting by this point. Um, but we don't, unfortunately. We're getting that later on down the line. Now, what's going to make this better is a class that we don't have yet. It's a successor class by the name of Phantom. Now, Phantom is another one of Bouncer's, um, one of Bouncer's possible subclass uses. And isn't just for jet boots. It's actually going to be for jet boots and dual blades. Not the dual blades only, boys. I'm sorry, soaring blades only, boys, but uh, but jet boots and dual blade or soaring blades or jet boots only. Soaring blades only is still gonna go bouncer hunter, um, in most cases. But the reason this actually ends up being pretty good is two major reasons. One, you uh, are getting unconditional damage based bonuses across the board. It affects text as well as it affects your melee damage or your melee power. And two. You, by the time this becomes a class that's available to use as a subclass, we're going to have access to things that we'll be able to use as defensive options, ways of healing ourselves up or surviving one hit, you know, one hit KOs and things like that, that normally would make playing a subclass that does not have any defenses available to us fairly difficult. Now, the only defense that's available to Phantom is this ability here called Just Pence. I'm not sure if that's the, the name they're going to use beforehand, but this keeps you from being like one shot quickly. Um, so normally have time to heal yourself up however we don't have access to it because it's main class only so this is kind of like when you're thinking of fighter but it's better fighter and it comes around the time frame that we're going to be able to save ourselves other ways so hang in there guys that want to play you know tech based jet boots it is going to be a thing that you can definitely play it is extremely strong by the way and things like full drive that increase our gear gain bonus do affect it 
and short tech charge also affect that was what i was mentioning the class that actually is able to make that charge even faster this also affects it along with rapid boost so it gets crazy crazy fast and crazy strong so that's pretty much it um, covering everything i wanted to talk about in today's video um, hopefully that does cover everything i might have missed a couple of things if i did you guys in the comments have always been super super helpful about mentioning it i did want to go ahead and toss a quick shout out i don't know how to pronounce your name i'm going to point to it so you can see it on video there we go good friend of the channel person comments dropping to zero doesn't make you lose the element it will just not apply until you regain one bar then the same element as before then the same element as before drop basically stating that if for example you cast foe a fully charged foe from your jet boots you then jet sweep kick to make your element go down to zero or your focus go down to zero once you deal damage so once you actually attack and get your focus bar back up to say one your element will be back on there as well and that is something i tested and does come out to be true so that's great um, the only thing that makes you lose the element is the weapon action used from neutral or press twice with the skill point. Now, I'm not sure what he meant with the skill point specifically. I'm pretty sure he's talking about, about this here. So about elemental burst, I believe that's what he's referring to specifically. I know using right, using your, I say right click because I have my weapon action bound to right click. I know using your weapon action does remove your, um, does remove your element so you do lose your element if you just like say neutral weapon action which is just an iframe um also hitting for example hitting a normal attack and then pressing your uh pressing your weapon action does not lose your element but hitting a normal attack pressing your weapon action then pressing your weapon action again which causes you to uh to dodge something does lose your element so that's something to keep in mind so he might be referring to uh pressing the button just as your weapon action itself or it could be with the actual skill. Now, one of the thing I noticed as well was using just jet sweep kick without pressing the weapon action does cause an explosion around you and does seem to drain your element. So there's that as well. I would see keep all those things in mind when you're playing bouncer and just kind of sit around and test things out. There is something in game that allows you to test these things out. You have a practice mode where you can kick a rock bear in the face over and over again. I recommend that you go over there and test these sort of things out, see what's going to work best for you, your combination, so on and so forth. I always get questions about, you know, how do you learn to do this? How would you, you know, figure this out? Where do you get a chance to practice, so on and so forth? And it's just kicking the rock bear in the face a couple of times when I see something new pop up and try to emulate it. So. I would recommend giving that a shot, checking that out. But anyway, if you guys were just here for the web or for the actual skill tree, again, I'll be tossing that in the video description below, along with a link to the previous skill tree guide that was about soaring blades. In case that's what you're looking for, you'll be able to find that. Like the video if it was helpful for you. Subscribing does help us out and does help you keep up with the content itself. I know it's super cringe, but it does help me out a ton. It makes me feel all warm and fuzzy on the inside and does absolve you a little bit, a little bit. I only say a little bit because we all know what's there, but it absolves you a little bit of that ad block guilt. Um, and yeah, comment if you have any other questions about the video itself. Um, hopefully we can get to those and uh, we'll do our best to help you guys out. Now, after the fact, so this is after the video itself. So those of you guys who stuck around who are still here, first off, thank you for hanging out um kind of get a, a little bit of a sneak peek in what i actually want to work on so this has been a little bit eye-opening for my understanding of classes in general there are certain nuances that i don't know so what i want to do is and this also gives me an excuse to stream because i know a lot of you guys are following the channel i can literally see the follows on the channel itself as they're happening and it might have actually popped up in a video and i just didn't notice it because of the volume not being turned up so hey if you're there cool anyway um I can see you guys all following the channel, so thank you a ton. Some of you subscribing, that's insane. I'll be shouting you guys out in um, either when we go live or on another video itself. But I do see all of you guys doing this. It is super helpful, I do notice you. So I do wanna have some streaming content available. And what we're gonna do is go through the classes. So thinking about playing each and every one of them in their intended fashion. So playing summoner with pets, playing hunter, with a sword with a partisan and with wired lances playing fighter with all three weapons as well playing forest by using talus and using rod playing braver not just with the katana but also with a bow so these sorts of things i want to look into everything and just try playing everything out now <laughs> the downsides it's going to cost me all the money you guys see is probably going to start to dwindle away a little bit 
You're also going to notice I'm going to need more mags. So we'll have to make two more mags, attack mag, and I'll have to make a range mag. I've got two currently, but I'm going to need two more. Um, just because I want to really dive into these and I want to make sure that we have a bit more for skill trees as far as uh, this content goes. Not only is it something that you guys have come to the channel for a lot in the past, but it is something that I get questions about all the time, whether it be in DMs, whether it be in the comments, you know, what I recommend for the skill tree, how does a specific ability work? And I do want to bring that content to you guys. And to be perfectly honest, I could not play the game right now until we get new content. I could not play the game until we get like a new boss or till we get, to be perfectly honest, episode four, because I really have everything I need on Bouncer right now. So I'm looking for something to do for you guys. I'm thinking this is going to be it. I want to give it a shot and we'll see how it goes. But anyway, again, thanks for joining me on this one. I know it's been a bit of a longer video. I know I've had to record this a couple of times, so hopefully this, this one works. I'm, I'm hoping this is the right one here that we've got to correct this time around. Um, and yeah, I'll see you all in the next video. Thanks for watching. Take care. Peace.